next one she does. The perception of weakness um, and the perception of um, the loss of someone's mind. It's a very scary thing for people. I think people want to believe that that's not going to happen to them. So with people with mental health conditions, it's very easy to other. That's not going to happen to me. That's not me. Um, I can handle anything, that sort of thing. The benefits of a peer-run program are the fact that because everyone on staff, including myself, we have lived experience uh, with mental health conditions and working the system. But to be able to support other people who are trying to figure out how to work, knowing that they have a mental health condition, trying to figure out how to be in the world and also use their lived experiences uh, to work with other people, we're able to do that very easily. Uh, where do I think stigma comes from? It starts with media. It starts with television, film. Uh, people's first experiences with learning about mental health conditions as some quote-unquote lunatic or some freak on a show who does something terrible to somebody else. I think that, that because mental illness can be very wily like that, it gives people that sense of um, uncertainty and no one likes to be uncertain. Invisibility of mental illness, yeah, that is the crux of the challenge with mental health concerns. It's, you have to report it, you have to talk about it, you have to um, explain what's happening or how you're experiencing the world in a way that's very um, painful for you. I think arrest and conviction is, you're going to look at it, you know, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I got a company, I'm looking at how he's doing arrest. I want to do more. We're all in this together. The basis of peer work is based in social justice. The social justice aspect comes from the 70s, where people who were abused by the system, where they're forced treatment, forced to be in a hospital, tied down, people who are really abused by the system, came together for a political movement to say, you know, we're human beings. We have the right to decide in our treatment. We have the right to decide how we're treated. One of the lines that Howie the Harp said in one of the films he did was, the very people affected by their problem are the very people who can solve the problem. Toro, he was very kind, very self-reflected. He was very, um, he understood what we were doing in the work of peer support and he was willing to use his background for, to do the work. He was just very, he was just very real. We gotta go back into the classroom. What time are we supposed right, to go back? 2.15? Huh? Best oh. coffee and coffee. Speaking of makers right there. Where's the coffee up here? And that's the most important thing, helping somebody out that's been in a similar situation and pointing them in the right direction. Uh, I was introduced to Howie the Harp by one of my social workers. Uh, before I was going in and out of the hospital, I was coming in and out of the psych ward, and I spoke to her. I said, listen, I need to seek your counsel. I need your advice on this. I know you're not my therapist anymore because of situations. But uh, I need to know, where do I go? What do I do? Uh, Lene is very special. Their charisma is contagious. So when you're feeling down on the dumps and you're feeling low and you don't feel like coming in and, you know, you think about it. My house is toxic. So what am I going to do staying home? I have to come into class and prepare myself for everyday life again. My story... So it turns out that the ordeal happened on April 2001. Uh, I went back to an old relationship. We had broken up and we got together. And to make a long story short, uh, we got involved. We had a couple of drinks and we did a couple of things. Now, I got a bad batch. Maybe she put something in my drink. She wanted to get back at me for whatever reason. I'm not going to say that I'm going to blame her for everything. I'm not a victim, but I should have known better that she was mean-spirited. And due to that, yeah, I had a downfall, an extreme 
extremely powerful, uh, I guess, fall from grace. I was okay, I, I thought I was okay, and then everything just went downhill. So it was like a rude awakening, plus a whole bunch of mental issues coming and spiritual issues were happening. So it was a very intense time of my life. Uh, I thought my life was in danger. I suffered from severe paranoia. I couldn't go out. I couldn't make acquaintances. It, it was living hell. Okay? Hey, mama. You okay? Yeah, I'm Stop fine, hits. baby. Yeah, I'm good. All right. I know you're good. I know you're fine. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're okay. I'm okay, love. Cool. I don't know. I'm a little eccentric. I'm a little different. You know what I mean, I like to consider myself different. You know what I mean? Um, I'm an individual part of a collective, but do I get judged a lot? People think one thing or another, like I'm some kind of convict, or I'm this, or I'm that, and once they talk to me, it's like, yo, you're, you're cool. That's it. I don't want to. Do you want me to tell you that? What's up? I meant to tell you that when you were first applying for the program. Yeah. When you first walked in, you had all those tattoos. I was like, oh. Yeah, okay. you let me know. Okay, okay. You told like, okay, me. Okay. You're like, you're intense. <laughs> I was like, word. <laughs> she, you, I love that about you. You're like, dude. I was like, yes. You're intense. I was like, wow. <laughs> So I'm just glad that I'm I'm here. Yeah. Now I'm doing something for myself, and I'm trying to trying to better myself and p become a provider, mm -hmm. have a family, baby and a lady. I told you guys that's all I'm aiming for right now. You did say that. I don't want to put. I want my. You did say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want. Elmhurst Hospital. 1975 and I've been with the hospital ever since. I started the treatment plan 16 years ago. So it's almost like I was born there and I can't get out of there. You know what I mean? So that's the funny part. But I'm only, give or take, four or five long blocks away from the hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to just go walk in and walk out. You know what I mean? It's not a problem. I hope to get a job there. And then for my commute, it's not that complicated. I just walk, walk in distance, back and forth, able to provide, and that's it. Start normal life all over again. That's what I'm trying to do is bridge that gap, like I said before.